Hello and welcome to episode 55 of my podcast, Unwind and Knit With Me. My name is Lisa and I'm coming to you from the South Island um, Christchurch in New Zealand. And if you are a first time viewer to my podcast, welcome and thank you for joining me. And to all of my returning viewers, welcome back and a big thank you. I am late coming to you with this podcast and I will give you a little bit of an explanation why I have tried to record this video for about 10 days now, but right opposite where I live, um, where I am now is right at the front of my house and right opposite there's construction going on and um, it's more than just the construction noise. So here in Christchurch um, in 2010, we had really bad earthquakes. So the compliance now to build new properties um, is really quite strict, which is really good. Um, but there's three houses got sold by, and they got purchased by developers and they're being flattened and they're putting in townhouses. And they've got these big pylons, which are the size of power, uh, power poles, and they're 11 metres high, and they get drilled into the ground nine metres, nine metres into the earth. And it's this bang, bang, and it goes all day. It's been happening for about 10 days while they put these pylons in the ground. But even worse, the ground trembles and it feels like an aftershock and it's quite unsettling. And so for the last 10 days, I just haven't enjoyed being here and I haven't wanted to podcast because of the noise and the vibrations. And there's still probably about another four days. I went and, talk, I went and spoke to the builders. <laughs> there's still next week about another four days of it. But today is Saturday and it's very quiet and peaceful here and there's no construction going on so that's why it's taken me so long to record this um it's about my third or fourth attempt and I keep just deleting it and I think oh no I'll start again on another day so with all of that said this is episode 55 I am about 10 days late coming to you so thank you very much for your patience and thank you for joining me today um, if you are new to my channel, once again, um, please subscribe and hit the thumbs up button. If you enjoy the content, that really helps um, me and, and my podcast on YouTube. So please subscribe and give the thumbs up. You can also find me on Facebook and Instagram as I'm winding it with me. And everything I talk about today, whether it's pattern, yarns, events, books, um, I leave show notes below with links to everything that I talk about. So you can always um, go back and look at the show notes. Um, I've got a couple of shout outs. So in the last month, um, I've had some, uh, some really neat visitors to my little shop here that have reached out to me and I open by appointment most days. But I want to give a shout out to Lee and Barb. So I met these two ladies and they were driving from um, Fongaray. They're from Fongaray and Dargaville. And they were driving the length of New Zealand down to Bluff in Invercargill. Um, and they were in, um, what would you call them? Um, they're car enthusiasts. So they had like, I wouldn't say vintage, but... Um, Mustangs. Well, I think one was a Mustang from like the 1960s, like these real done up um, old, older cars or vintage cars. And they called in and saw me. So big uh, shout out to Lee and Barb. I hope the rest of your trip has gone really well. Um, and also, I wanted to tell you this little story. Right from the beginning, um, from podcast one and two, I had a lady. Um, named Raylene and she reached out to me and she said love your podcast I'm a Kiwi that now lives in London um, so an expat and she said it's just so nice to have that connection back to New Zealand and a Kiwi connection um, and she left a message um, on my comments or it might have been on my Facebook and then another lady came in and she said oh, I'm also a Kiwi living in London and her name was Debbie and um, she connected with me about my, my podcast and said it's wonderful to have a Kiwi podcaster. But what happened is 
through those two comments, those two ladies met up with each other in London. And now fast forward nearly three years, they've become really good friends. And they, she said they meet up together every month and they go yarn shopping in different parts of London. They just, I think they just get on the train and go to different areas. And she come to visit me, she was visiting um, from London. And I just think that's the neatest story. And it was just reminded me of actually why I do these podcasts is for that connection. Um, so I do just want to give a shout out to Raylene and Debbie. Um, she may be back in the UK now, but thank you very much for coming to see me. And the next shout out I want to give out to is, um, so Barb and Tamsin um, hosted a knit and gather uh, retreat here in Christchurch, actually just north of Christchurch. And it was the first year they did it and they had, I think it was two days of classes and a, um, a knit and gather sort of retreat. But on the Sunday they had a trader's day and I went along as a trader um, with probably 20 or 30, maybe about 20 others. And we didn't know what to expect because it was the first year they've hosted it. And it was amazing. It was a really, really good day. I got to meet lots of people, lots of new people. I got to say hello to people that I hadn't seen for a couple of years. Um, but I just want to congratulate Barbara uh, and Tamsin for doing such a great job. And the, I know that they've already said next year is going to be bigger and better. So um, well done, ladies. And I really look forward to next year. And I think that's everything I wanted to cover in my introduction. Um, and it was a long introduction. We're nearly seven minutes and I haven't started to talk about knitting yet. So I'm going to start talking about my knitting. I've got new cast-ons, FOs, whips, um, new patterns that I have um, come across that I want to talk to you about. Um, and some show and tell and a shop update. So let's get started with what I'm wearing. Okay, so I am wearing The Widow's Kiss by um, Thea Coleman from Baby Cocktails. And if you followed me for a while, you probably followed my progress while I was knitting this. But that's the pattern there, Widow's Kiss. Um, I won't stand up, but it's, um, it's, I just love it. I love all the cable in it. Um, I love the relaxed neckline. It is long sleeve. The sleeves are all just stockinette stitch, but the whole body um, back and front is this cable pattern that you can see. I did, I will talk about sizing a bit later in my podcast. I did actually do the size five, which was 44 inch, and that included... Um, about five inches of positive ease. I probably could have got away with a size four, but it's not too big. It's it's a little bit boxy through the body, which I like, um, but I did do the size five. I did mine in Apple Door DK. So the yarn calls for a rustic DK. Um, I can't remember the brand that, she, that Thea Coleman used. Um, but available to me here in New Zealand, um, I think this was the best choice. So Apple Door DK comes out of the UK um, and it's a bit of a rustic yarn and it is beautiful for cable and moss stitch. It's the same yarn that I did my Winter Beach Cardi in. I think it just holds um, cable and the stitch definition of cable beautifully. Some people can find this a little bit rustic, a little bit too scratchy. I have got um, like a camisole under it, but it's still close to my skin here and I'm not irritated by it. But then again, I can handle a little bit of scratch factor. Um, but this yarn is beautiful for cable. I would highly recommend it for cardigans and outerwear if you are a little bit sensitive. Um, but I can't speak highly about highly enough about this yarn for this type of garment. I do. I have worn this quite a lot um, in the last couple of months, and I tend to wear it a lot with jeans. It just looks really good. I love it. Um, the colour that I did mine is in is called Payhembury, um, which, as you can see, is really really close 
to the actual, put it there, it's really close to the actual colour that she has used. And I just love it. I know that a couple of my viewers have bought sweater quantities of this. And I, I think there's probably going to be a few widow's kisses out there in New Zealand. Um, so I just hope that you love it and enjoy it as much as I do. What I will say is um, with all my John Urban textile yarns, which I'll talk about in my shop update. Um, but you can buy swatch cards. Um, and I was out of stock of the Apple door ones, but they are back in stock, um, on my website, they're under shade cards. So you can purchase the shade cards, um, if you are keen to sort of do a sweater, but you're not sure of your colors, um, on the website, like they're pretty close. The photos I use on my website are photos that come from the library from John Urban Textiles. But still, depending on your monitor and your screen and what device you're looking at them on, sometimes they're not true. And that's where the shade cards are really, really good. So that is what I'm wearing. Um, I, I really enjoyed knitting it. I loved all the cable um, in it. Yeah, I love it. Wear it a lot. So that's what I'm wearing. Um and finished objects. I'll talk about my finished objects. First of all, I want to say, and I suppose it's not a confession, it's just a fact. <laughs> I didn't do this. I have wanted to do this vest for a long time. It's from Good. the designer is Goodwin Johnson and it's from, um, the, Sh I've, from the Shetland Trader, which is a book I purchased a couple of years ago. She has, um, this is book three. She has since brought out another book. But in this book, so there's a photograph of it there. And it's called, and I know I'm not going to pronounce this correctly because I think it's a, a Gaelic or a Scottish pronunciation, but I'm going to say that it's called Willapond. Um, W-I-L-L-A-P-U-N-T, but I'm sure it's pronounced differently. Uh, this pattern is on Ravelry. You don't have to buy the book. You can buy the pattern individually. And I will leave the link below for the pattern. But there's another photograph of it. And there's another photograph there. This colour here really appealed to me. And as you can see, that's the colours that I, um, that I have chosen. Now, I just want to check, Goodwin Johnson uses a lot of um, Shetland wool, a lot of Jamison and Smith or um, Jamison Spindrift, and the other one's Jamison of Shetland. Um, what did she use in this one? So she did actually use Jamison and Smith in this one, um, which I'll show you the colours that I used. With the Jameson and Smith, I've got 72 colours in that range now, so there's a huge amount to choose from. Um, these are the four colours that I used, or no, these are the four colours that Gail used. So what happened, my friend Gail, who is a very accomplished knitter, and she knew that I wanted to knit it, and she said to me, I'll knit it for you. And I, she also wanted to knit it because there's quite a bit of steaking in it, and there's some new techniques that I think were new to her. So she wanted to experience those new techniques. And my plan was to get Gail on with me to talk about it, um, but we just haven't been, our timing hasn't been right. And then when she was available, I had stuff going on here and it, it just hasn't worked. So I may still get Gail on to talk about the process she used with the steaking. Um, so it's knitted from the bottom up and then you do a steaking bridge um, and you steak for the armholes and I think also the neckline. The other feature of this pattern that's beautiful is around the neckline and around the sleeves here is I-cord. So that's actually finished with I-cord. Um, I think she did also say you only ever use two colours at a time. Um, so really nice for that, uh, what's it called? Double stranded colour work. Um, and Jameson and Smith for colour work rocks. It is perfect because it's a nice grippy yarn. And I want to show you the floats. You can see on the floats here. I'll move that a bit closer. 
the back looks as good as the front does and they just sit beautifully they don't move um and i just can't speak highly enough of this yarn for color work it is once again it's a rustic toothy yarn so probably not recommended for close to skin but vest cardigans outerwear jerseys any color work any marie wallen work this this yarn rocks but the colors i chose so the white in that is um 1a the tan color is called sand and that's fc45 i'm going to leave all this in my show notes below the salmon is called salmon <laughs> it's 9144 and the black i've used is the charcoal which is number 81 there is another black that's more of a solid black um but i went with the charcoal so they're the four colors that i used I'm not sure of the meterage. I will have to check with Gail, but she did it exactly to pattern. She did a size three. We did take my measurements and it was, a, I'm pretty sure it was a size three. And she knitted this out of the pattern from the book. And she said it was a very clear, very clear instructions and uh, a well-written pattern to work from. I haven't worn it yet. Um, I have blocked it. And I may block it again because I think it relaxes a little bit more when it has that good soak in hot water. But my plan is to wear this um, over a white shirt, maybe over a white linen shirt, or even on a day where it's not so cold, over a t-shirt, maybe just a white t-shirt or a black t-shirt. Um, I'm absolutely thrilled. I feel very, very spoiled that somebody has done this for me. Um, and I will leave the links to the pattern if you want to do this vest, I'll leave the links to the pattern, but I'll also leave the links to the four colors that I used. Um, but you will see in the project notes on Ravelry, there are so many color combinations. I saw one with pink, white, and purples, um, blue combinations. It's You could use any, com any color combination. Um, I did... I'll just read this. This is from the pattern. This vest is worked in one piece from the bottom up. Front and back are then divided at the under arms and steak, sti steak stitches are cast on to work the remainder of the upper body. Um, additional steaks are added for the front neck and for the back. After the shoulders have been joined, the stitches are then picked up around the armholes for an eye cord cast off. Finished, yeah, with an eye cord cast off. And the neck band is also finished with an eye cord. What I can show you, I'm actually going to take it off and show you. Because it deserves to be shown. Gail um, got onto YouTube and she, the method she used to finish off this steak was the crochet method. I won't go into the techniques. I have done it myself before and I also followed the instructions off YouTube. Um, but you basically, you can see this crochet line here, which is, um, she's used to bind it off. So that's the steak bridge with the crocheted edge. Um, and then you pick up here and you do this beautiful eye cord. So that's that. If you have followed me um, sort of right through, I have talked about this vest in earlier podcasts because it is something that I have wanted. Yeah, so that's the Willow Willa Pond. Willow Pond <laughs> Vest by Gudrun Johnston. Um, it is in the Shetland Trader book, but it is also available on Ravelry. So there's some beautiful patterns in this book. Really, really nice patterns. So that is that. That's that whip. I'm going to very briefly touch on my on my on my Marie Wallen. 
I have for a couple of years now been working on this jersey that's on the front cover of the Cherish book. And I have done, it's worked bottom up and I have done the body up to the underarm. And now I'm on Sleeve Island. I am like seriously on Sleeve Island. I told you a couple of episodes ago that I was going to get it out. I was going to work on it this winter. Well, that's as far as I've got. I still haven't got any further than the cuff. And I'm at the stage where I'm just about to start my colour work. I have all my yarn and I have the key for it there. But <laughs> I'll show you this. That's the graph. And I just couldn't even read it. And I tried to zoom in on it and I was having so many problems um, even trying to work out at the bottom here where to start. And I put it on my iPad on my Knit Companion so I could zoom right into it. And I sat down with a friend last night and I said to her, what am I missing? Why, can, why can't I work out this pattern repeat? And I knew that what it needed was a fresh set of eyes to look at it because I had overthought everything and I was getting really frustrated with it. And she looked at it and she said, well, Lisa, I think it's A, B, C, D. I went, oh, okay. Yep. Okay. And that's all I needed was a fresh set of eyes to look at it, to put me on the right path. Um, so I am now ready to start my colour work now that I've had a second opinion. I think my point there is, as knitters, we know what to do, but sometimes it does take somebody else to say, well, yeah, all you got to do is ABC. And it's like, hmm, okay. So don't ever be afraid to ask for someone's advice because that's what happened to me here. I just got stuck. Um, but I am now ready to continue to work on that and I'm actually for the first time in about a year I'm actually looking forward to doing that double stranded colour work um, on that garment so that is where I'm at with my Marie Wallen um, now I'm going to talk to you about another FO but I'm just going to get a drink okay this episode is going to sound a little bit like I'm doubting myself and I've been making mistakes and I have needed advice. And I think that's okay. I do want to talk about, I talk to you a lot about my successes, but I do also have dilemmas. So I think it's really good that I share those with you as well. So, so if you're having a dilemma, you don't feel alone. So in my last episode, I showed you a finished object, which was this beautiful blueberry vodka lemonade once again by Thea Coleman of um, Baby Cocktails. And I finished this garment. I did it in this beautiful blue merino that I dyed myself. It is here. Love all the detail on it. Love the, re the, the relaxed neckline. Love everything about this pattern. But when I tried it on, I had tried it on as I went, but I wet blocked it and I went to wear it and it's too big on me. It's too big in the neckline. It's too big in the underarms. And I wore it to my knit group where I've got um, a small group of friends that I knit with that are actually brutally honest as well, which is really good. And I sort of said to them, what have I done so wrong? What has happened to this pattern? And I actually confess that I think I often knit things too big for me. And I don't know whether it's a bit of, um, what is my daughter calls it, body dysmorphia, <laughs> where you either look at yourself and you think you're bigger than you are or you think you're smaller than you actually are. And what I tend to do is I do my measurements and I think, oh, yeah, but then I think, oh, but I need at least 10 centimetres positive ease because I need it to be boxier and I need it to be looser. So I quite often end up with garments that are actually too big on me. Um, my ranunculus that I did a few episodes ago, I did it in a silk mohair. It's beautiful. The colour is beautiful, but it's actually quite big on me. And, and I, I can get away with it, but I had to stop and think, okay, Lisa, you've got to stop doing this. So with my friends, 
we actually redid my measurements and I thought yeah I am that's the size I did I did the size for a 40 inch upper bust but then I do this okay so a 40 inch upper bust is going to give me a size three but I think I'll do the size four or in this case I was a size four but I went oh, I think I'll do the size five and I have to stop doing that and I thought I'd share that with you because I'm sure there's other people that do it as well and it's not I, I've done a lot of courses on how to take your measurements and how to do you know what to do to get a garment to fit you perfectly but I break those rules and I have to I have to stop doing that so I had this I had this discussion with my friends what I've done with this it is too big and I have actually put it in the, the dryer a couple of times to try to shrink it but I'm scared to do that as well like I'm opening the dryer door every two minutes so I think I have to give it a good five or ten minutes to shrink it a bit because I really want to wear it I did consider gifting it to somebody but um what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to shrink it so I'll either it'll either be a success or not a success but the the message with this is that I did it too big I'll show you that see that detail down the side it's just beautiful I love the pattern so I love the pattern so much that I cast on another one <laughs> but I've gone down a size I'm using the same yarn which is 100% um, New Zealand Merino and I've actually gone down quarter of a needle size so I've tightened up my gauge a little bit and I've gone down a whole garment size I want to I'll show you the yarn I'm using I have wanted to use this garment this yarn in a garment for a very long time so this is a yarn that's under my own label and wanted to knit with me and this color is called Rocky Road and you can see there it is a charcoal but there's a lot of pinks and blues you can see there there are pinks and blues that um, that are in it I have quite a bit of this in stock if you're wanting to do that that's what it looks like caked up the light's not that great but here I am here I am take two <laughs> um you can't see much I'm only probably halfway down for the raglan increasing but I really want to do this I was actually it's less than four weeks now before I go to Canada and I really wanted that to wear to Canada but unless I can shrink it I won't be wearing that um to Knit City and then I thought oh I wonder if I can get this done in time to to take to Canada but I am doing it again I have gone down a garment size and I've also gone down quarter of a needle size um to get a bit of a tighter gauge so that's blueberry blueberry vodka lemonade um take two and i think it's you know it's like oh do i really want to knit the same thing again straight after doing it but i actually really do i really enjoyed all of the detail in that pattern um and once you get to the body it's just easy stockinette stitch it is not a hard pattern it's actually quite um quite a lovely pattern and I really wish you could see the color because the light's just not oh it is there so although it is a darker sort of charcoal you can see all those pinks and green and blues that come out in it it's really lovely anyway that color is um it's under New Zealand Merino on my website and the colour is called Rocky Road and I'll leave the link below um, for that in my notes. So, take two. The next whip, I'm going to pause because I'm going to put it on um, Dolly, my mannequin, so you can see it in its all its glory. Okay. This is um, a whip that I've been working on quite a lot since I saw you last time. I, do, I did talk about it in my last podcast. Um, but the pattern is called Elden 
by Jen Steingars, and that's A L D E N. That's it there. I really love um, Jen Steingars' patterns for colourwork yokes. There are so many to choose from, from fingering weight, sports weight, through to DK, um, and they're all special. That There's some, yeah, I just love it. And what I really love about this one and why I wanted to do it was the colour work that continues onto the cuff of the sleeve. And then it's just got a little, um, it's, a, it's an eye cord bind off. Um, it is rolling up a bit, but I'm pretty sure I will, when I block that, I will pin that down so it doesn't roll up. Um, but I have the colour work continues down into the sleeve. And I think this is just beautiful. I am really, really excited about this. Um, I do knit in a lot of greys and blues and earthy tones. I don't knit with a lot of colour, um, but I'm really excited about this one. So I'll talk to you about the yarn and what I have to, I have to sort of apologize because I don't think you can buy this yarn. Um, I bought this yarn at the Wellington uh, Fibre Festival, I think it's called, um, their annual yarn show. And this yarn is from the Kindly Dyer and she dyes with natural botanicals um, like from the garden and uh, she doesn't use acid dyes or chemicals. Um, and I have checked her web. She doesn't, I don't think her website's updated regularly. So um, I don't, I don't think you can just easily buy this yarn. It is just a um, merino, a New Zealand merino. There's nothing unique about the yarn, but the colour is probably quite unique. I bought three skeins of it and that will be enough to do this. I was, I did have another colour for the colour work yoke that didn't work, which I talked about in my last episode. So I wasn't sure what colour I was going to do this. But then I was at another yarn show in Dunedin recently and I picked up this beautiful skein of wool, um, which I'll talk about. But when I looked at this and I looked at that, I just thought, yeah, that, it's going to work. They're a beautiful pair and I'm super, super thrilled. Once again, this was a limited, um, a sort of one-off dye batch, and I don't think you can get it again. But what I will say about this yarn, this yarn is dyed by James Herbison, and he is a Kiwi that is now residing in Greytown, um, which is in the North Island, just north of Wellington in the Wairapa region. And he is a very good accomplished knitter, um, but he also is a yarn dyer and he's opened another shop and I did, I will leave the details in my show notes, but his shop is on 81 Main Street in Greytown, if you are in that wire wrapper region. And I think it opens, I'm going to say next weekend, somewhere around the 20, it, somewhere around late, um, late April. But um, I will, you can follow James. That's what I wanted to say. You can follow James on Instagram. He's just under James Herbison. I will leave his link because I'm pretty sure he will post on his social media when he's going to open. Um, so that's the yarn and it's from um, Joy of Yarn. And that's my main colour. And what I'm really happy about this with, this is literally yarn from my stash. That was bought over, I was bought about a year ago. And this was bought um, just an impulse buy, a one-off single skein that I didn't know what I was going to do with it. Um, and I'm pretty sure that if you ladies or gentlemen go through your stash, you would probably find something that would work in one of these giant Jen Steingast patterns. Um, you don't have to go out and spend a hundred dollars on, um, sort of self-striping yarn. A lot of indie dyed, uh, a lot of indie dyed variegated yarn works really well because that's all this is, is a variegated, um, it's not sort of self-striping or anything. Um, and it has worked really well. I'm really, really happy with it. So that's the Alden by Jen Steingarth. Um, 
I am doing the size four. I have tried it on a couple of times and it fits beautifully. It's not too big. One thing I will say is, once again, I haven't followed my own rules. I often say to go up half a needle size for the sleeves because I know personally myself, I need a bit, I do need a bit tighter in that small circumference. And I didn't. I didn't go up a needle size. And this is a little bit snug. I'm hoping it will relax a bit with blocking. In saying that, it does fit. Like it's a little bit snug, but it does fit. Um, but if you have that same problem, just be mindful of that, that sometimes it's okay to go up half a needle size for your sleeves. Um, German short rows I used at the back. I didn't use wrap and turns uh, for the short rows at the back. And the increase was an increase I hadn't done before, and it's called the Invisible Increase Lift. Um, and in the pattern, Jen has a link to the, the tutorial. Um, so I did have to check YouTube how to do that particular um, increase. And it's so it's sort of an increase, an invisible increase in the yoke. Um, what else can I say about that? nothing i've just followed the pattern um she does say in the pattern you use your, the same needle size that you use in the body but when you do the color work in the cuff she does tell you to go i think it's from a size 3.75 to a four and i'm assuming that's because when we work in the round and we do color work it's probably a wee bit tighter but i actually wish i had done a size four all the way down what I did was a 3.75, then a 4. Um, but you'll work that out. The collar is, um, you can see it there, it's a little rolled collar with a bit of rib. Um, the cast on, I think, what cast on did I use? I used whatever was in the pattern. I can't remember what it was. But what I will say, um, and I say this all the time, when you cast in on a collar or a neckline, be really mindful of how loose or how tight you are doing it. Because I have done it, I've had friends do it, I have had viewers message me about doing it too tight and then not getting it over their heads. Um, I know there's Miss Arena by Caitlin Hunter. I've had a couple of my customers do that because um, I've done a couple of those. And quite often they can't fit it over their head. So be really, really mindful, not just in this pattern, or but in all patterns, that once you cast on and you do those couple of rows, make sure it can fit over your head because there's nothing worse than getting all the way down here to work out that it doesn't fit over your head. Um, yeah, so I'm really enjoying this. I will definitely have this finished to take to Canada. And I hope to wear this um, at Knit City one day at Canada um, with my blueberry, blueberry vodka. But really, I don't think I'm going to get the both finished um, in three and a half weeks. So that's my Elden. Um, and I have, after I my last podcast, I think I actually said to you, I have cast on itis. I have this urge to cast on some new projects like not just one but two or three new projects um i had the patterns and i had the yarn and i had it all ready to go um well i will tell you i didn't disappoint i have i've cast this one on i've cast on that new blueberry berry vodka and i've cast on another one and i'm going to get it and show it to you okay my next whip also i talked about in my last podcast as something i wanted to cast on and I haven't disappointed, I cast it on. And it's the Riptide Slipover, which is a vest. This designer is um, Jennifer Shields Tolkien, and she goes under JST Knitwear Designs. I will leave the link um, in my show notes. And I encourage you to go and have a look at some of her patterns because she's got some really nice patterns, very well-written patterns. Um, I know that my friends from Canada, um, 
Noelle and Kelly have done an interview with Jennifer and they've knitted a few of her garments and they're really, really nice. And they, um, that's where I've been encouraged to do because I watch them. But I also know because I've been following social media, um, Instagram and uh, Knits and Pieces, Noelle and Kelly, that Jennifer is bringing out this vest in a V-neck. So this one's a round neck. So when you cast this on, you start at the back and you knit in the flat. I'm going to show it to you. That is what I've started. Um, you've got four stitch markers there where um, there's increases going on. It's a beautiful pattern, very easy, very well written pattern. So that's the top of the back and then I knit down and then I think you pick up and you do the front and then you join it in the rounds. It's got, I encourage you to go and have a look at this on um, Ravelry. It's got Mm, I'll see if there's another picture because it's got a split hem which I really like just excuse me I'm pretty sure there's another picture yeah I knew there was um so this shows it a little bit better as well I'm gonna put it on this side there's a split hem which I really like and then you've got this feature down the side and also the ribbon around the sleeve. That's a really good picture of it. But I know Jennifer has, she's just due very soon to release the V-neck version. And I know that I would prefer a V-neck over a round neck. So, let's put that away. I'm actually thinking that I might put this on hold and wait for the v-neck version to be released and what i'm hoping is the back section that i've done here is probably the same i'm thinking that the pattern will probably be all the same except for the shape in here for a round neck will be different to do the shaping for a v-neck i'm only guessing so i love this i love knitting the pattern it's i just cast this on this is sort of just one night's knitting and it was it was just the word rhythmic it was a beautiful um pattern repeat to do easy to follow but that's the dilemma i've got do i stop and wait because if i knit this in the round neck and then a v-neck version comes out i know that i'll go oh i wish i'd done a v-neck <laughs> so um as much as i love this pattern i I think I've answered my own question. I will put it on hold. I saw a post, and I think it might have only been this morning. And if it wasn't this morning, it was yesterday. And there's actually pictures of it. So I know whether it's just in the final test knit stage or whether it's still with tech, edi tech editors. Um, I'm pretty sure that by the time you watch me and in the next week or so, you you'll know more. It's probably um, going to get released. Now, this is done in a DK, and what I'm using is a 100% Merino, New Zealand Merino DK that was indie dyed. Um, I don't think this colour is available. I think it was sort of a one-off. But this came out of my stash, and I've probably had this about four years. Um, I really wanted to use the Knit by Numbers, which is the range behind me, um, which is a DK, and it's 50% Merino, 50% Blue Face Lester. And it's beautiful soft yarn. But but I was good. I took yarn out of my stash. I'm trying to get through some of my stash. So any DK, I know that Noelle just did the maths and she did it in a four ply. So I think if you're clever that way, you can um, probably do the calculation. And you could probably do this in a fingering weight instead of a DK weight. And I'm just looking at my notes. There's, I've just done it exactly the pattern. I haven't altered anything. There are four stitch markers and she refers to them um, as stitch marker one, two, three, and four. And on my notes, I have written pink, yellow, green, pink, yellow, green, and orange. So for me, when I get to that stitch marker, I know that the yellow one is stitch marker two. Um, 
so but i'm sure you'll work that out you'll just use your own system of knowing what stitch markers are for what um well, that's probably all i got to say on that i i really want this vest but um one of my customers has knitted it and she really enjoyed knit it, knitting it and she actually said to me last weekend you know there's a v-neck version coming out and i said yes yes i do so that's what i think i'll do i think i've answered my own question i think i'm going to put that on hold finish concentrate working on this and my other my second version my second take on the um blue berry vodka lemonade um and that's all my new whips that's all i'm working on at the moment which is good um but there is a pattern i want to talk to you about oh i'm going to show you this i'm actually going to show you a very brief show and tell i told you in the introductions how um i had a visitor named raylene visit visit me from the uk she's a kiwi that um, now lives in the UK she brought me this beautiful project bag have a look at it so it's got um, you know this UK breakfast and the um, everything representing the UK and this here she said is a recycled denim skirt that she bought from an op shop so she has got I think she said she got back into sewing over COVID um, and she taught herself and she's been making herself project bags and it's got lining inside and pockets inside and she have a card she actually, oh I will leave this um crafty kiwi I'll leave her Facebook page she left her card in it but I, I was just, I, I just felt so privileged and so stoked that she brought this all, the, she made this and brought it to me all the way from the UK, this wee project bag. So I'm going to use that. And the other bit of show and tell was since I've seen you last time, I had a birthday and I've got a really dear friend who um, I knit with and she considers me knit worthy, which, which is really good and she bought these for me she made these for my birthday and it's just the cutest so it's like an easter bunny and she's put pebbles on the bottom there's stones on there so he sits really nicely and she's also made me a gnome so i'm going to sit that with my gnome and it's like my little knitted friends family but she bought me this for my birthday and i think it's so special and my birthday actually coincided around the same time as easter this year so she made that for me. Thank you. I love him so much. And she also made this for me. She made me a hottie cover. Um, I This has been, this pattern is from Leslie and Friend. Um, and she did the, what's it called? Friend to Friend Shrug. And this is done in the same yarn. It's done in a really chunky yarn that here in New Zealand you can buy at Spotlight. But if you go to Leslie and Friends, you can get this pattern and it's the same yarn and the same designer that did that friend to friend shrug. Um, and I just love this. And do you know what? I'm gonna put this in my motorhome because I don't have like electric blanket or anything in my motorhome. So that is what she made me for my birthday. <laughs> um, I feel very blessed. That was so, so nice. Um, so when you've got a friend, a friend that knits for you, it's it's pretty special, isn't it? I think it is. Um, this too, just for the record, I haven't been buying patterns. My friend bought this pattern and it's her pattern, but she showed it to me and I thought, oh, I think I'm going to show that on my podcast. So it's not my pattern. I haven't purchased it, but I really like it. Um, here in New Zealand, of course, we're in autumn and we're going towards winter. So it's probably not something I'll knit very soon. But if you're over in the Northern Hemisphere, you may love this. Um, so this is a fairly new pattern by Hohi Locatelli. And it's called Adriata. Adriata. But it's a beautiful wee little, I'd go as far as saying sexy little summer top. It's just all this, I love this lace work down the side here. Um... The reason I 
got this um, and I wanted to show it to you. So the yarn it's done, it's a DK and it's a silk linen blend. And I offhand can't think of anything really that's accessible to me. I'm sure there's something here in New Zealand if I got on and done some Google searches. But I'd really like to do this in a similar sort of blend, like a silk linen. So what I'm going to do is probably purchase this or else I'll just take some notes. And when I'm away in Canada, um, I'm going to look for some different yarn, something that's a bit special so I can bring it home and knit this top for myself next summer. So that is the Adriata. I will return that to my friend because I didn't buy it. <laughs> um, if you're new to my podcast earlier, well, at the beginning of this year, I sort of made a little bit of a promise to myself that I wasn't going to purchase patterns because I have a lot. And I wanted to revisit some of the patterns that I've purchased because I loved, but I've never knitted. Um, in saying that, I have purchased a couple of books that contain patterns. So I don't think that counts. <laughs> uh, one of my viewers said to me, no, Lisa, that doesn't count. What you did was purchase a book that just happens to contain patterns. But then I had another viewer say, no, Lisa, that is purchasing patterns. So anyway, not to worry. Um... So that was the Adriata by Hohi Lakatali. Now, the next pattern, and this pattern was gifted to me by the designer. I have talked about this designer, and I really want to promote her because, number one, she is just an incredible, lovely lady, and number two, she's local, and she lives here in um, the Canterbury area, and she's designed some fabulous patterns and I'm going to leave the link below so you can jump onto Ravelry and have a, have a look. Now, she's actually designed over 30 patterns all the time while working full-time, studying full-time and raising three teenagers. She's a really busy lady. Um, uh, her name is Elizabeth and she's from Amika Hia Knits. Now, this is her latest design and I was going to purchase it but it wasn't on Ravelry. She had it at the Knit and Gather um, retreat that I went to last weekend. She had it in print, but it was still undergoing some, I'm not sure, some sort of tech editing or something, so it could be uploaded onto Ravelry. I'm pretty sure she said it should be uploaded this week. Um, if not, just give it a few days. It's not far away. Um, and this one is called First Frost, and it's a cardigan. And it has this beautiful lace work down here, but it also has a panel right down the back of the same lace work. I should have been more organized. Here we go. This is the back of it, and down the bottom is all lace work. So this cardigan has, see, this beautiful panel, and then right around the sides. So I contacted Elizabeth and I said, I want to copy that pattern because what happened, I got home and I had some yarn jump out at me and it was like that yarn has to be in this pattern. So I reached out to Elizabeth and I said, I can't find your pattern on Ravelry. And she said, that's because it's not there. <laughs> she said, you're impatient. So she sent me through the copy. She gifted it to me. So thank you, Elizabeth. Um but I'm pretty sure that it's going to be on um, on Ravelry, but probably by the time this podcast goes live. Um, so um, first, Frost, there is a little story about there about what inspired her to do this. So she has a little apple orchard on, she's got like a lifestyle property, and she talks about, I think there's one variety of tree or fruit in tree, and as soon as that turns, she sort of, that's her indication that winter's on its way. And there's a nice little story behind what inspired her to do uh, this pattern and why she named it, uh, what she named it. I'm um, just looking at my notes. Yeah, she's done over 32 patterns. That's pretty good for somebody that has a very busy life with, um, nurse, well, she was a nurse and then she restudied and raising kids so i really want to support elizabeth and her patterns 
Now, I thought I wrote some notes, but I can't. I can't find them. Anyway, I, maybe I didn't. I did because I was looking at the gauge. Sorry. Bear with me. <laughs> Here we are. So it's a twenty It's a twenty-two stitch gauge. Now the sample that she's done is in fingering weight, but I think I saw a sample that had been done in a light DK. But I think twenty-two stitch gauge is one of those gauges that you could get using a four ply, a five ply, or an eight ply, or finger and weight sports weight DK. Um, you just muck it. It's a cardigan. It's um, got positive fees. And I would encourage you that if you've got wool that you think, yes, that is perfect for that pattern, just play around with your needles your needles to get gauge. Um, because like I said, I saw a sample. I saw one did it. I'm pretty sure I saw one in a DK and there was a lady knitting one in a finger and weight. But anyway, I got home and I'd been at this trade show and I had to unpack all my yarn and get it back onto my shelves here in my shop. And this yarn jumped out at me. Now, this is Yarn Adelic, and it was a limited edition two years ago that I bought quite a lot of, and I still had, I think, 11 skeins. Now, I've taken three or four out for myself, so there's only about seven left. But this colour is called We Love You. It's in the sports weight, and it's limited edition. So you can't buy it anymore in this there's someone like myself that's still got some old stock on the shelf and the light's not it's a green but the reason this appealed to me is because Anamika knits her husband um she talks a lot about Maori language and heritage and meaning and tradition and inspiration that she gets from the landscape and our Maori heritage here in New Zealand and when I saw this yarn I just thought of our greenstone, our panamu, which is, um, I'm sure everyone has seen, sometimes I wear mine, uh, it's greenstone that is made into jewellery here at Shine Dub, and it looks like a jade, but it's not a jade, but it's, and I saw this, and that's it. instantly I thought of our panamu, which is our greenstone, and then I thought about Elizabeth and what she tries to translate in a lot of her patterns and where she gets her inspiration from. And I thought this yarn has to be in this, it has to be knitted up in one of Elizabeth's patterns. I don't wear a lot of green, but look, it's a greedy, it's a greeny jade kind of color. Um, there's the pattern there again, first frost, it's cold and it's a it's a beautiful cardigan, an easy to wear piece, but that beautiful lace around the bottom and that beautiful lace down, panel down the back. And I'm going to cast it on in this colour. And if you want to cast it on this colour, be really quick because there's only about seven skeins left. Um, but there are other colours. I'm sure you've probably even got wool in your stash. But that is um, going to be a new cast on for me. And I just really want to encourage you to go over and have a look at um, some of those patterns. There, I have talked about some of her patterns before. I just grabbed that um, because one of them is sky watching. A couple of my friends have knitted this cardigan and it's just a finger in weight. Once again, a really easy wearing cardigan, lace panel along the top. Um, just a really basic, easy to wear cardigan. That yarn she's done that in, I still have, it's um, a colour called dark denim. So Elizabeth, like I said, I like to support her because she's local, but she's really good at supporting us local um, yarn dyers and she does try to get behind the local um, yarn stores and dyers here in Christchurch. Um, yeah, I won't go through them all because I have shown them to you before. I showed you this one in my last podcast because I bought the wool for it. 
Oh. Sorry, I'm going to pause and get this pattern out. Um, this was the other pattern of Elizabeth's that I showed you in my last podcast called Maya. I think this pattern's been around for a little while. And Elizabeth knitted this up in yarn from an indie dyer that's in the North Island in Auckland called Happy Go Knitty. So you can buy, um, that's Happy Go Knitty yarn. But I purchased this yarn that I'm going to do it in. And I won't take it out because I think I'm pretty sure I showed it to you. But this is yarn from Alicia, which is um, Dye 54 Studio. So my point is that we've got some really good designers and we've got some really good um, indie dyers and yarn stores, including myself. Um, and it's just really nice, I think, to bring that all together if you are here in New Zealand um, using local designers and local yarns. But if you are not in New Zealand, still go and have a look at Elizabeth's patterns because they're worth it. And I really hope that you go on and have a look at this first frost. That cardigan. I'll put that away. I'm rattling lots, lots of plastic and I don't like doing that. I, um, As a viewer of other podcasters, I actually find that incredibly annoying when there's paper and plastic being crinkled. And I know I do it, but I do try to minimise it. Um, yeah, so that I even wound the ball. I've wound one ball um, and I am going to cast that on probably pretty soon. It probably probably won't come to Canada with me. It won't be finished, but it will just be a whip um, that I'm going to work on because I really want it. Yeah, so that was that one. Um, hmm. I think that's about all that's all my whips and it's all of my patterns and want to cast ons um i have finished all of those i wanted to show you my birthday presents which i did and i just wanted to quickly um just say again that the shade cards are back in stock and i have those for yana dalek apple door and exmoor sock and jameson and smith they are not free, um, and I do just want to say the price that you pay for them is the price that I pay for them. I don't put a markup or a margin on them, um, but unfortunately, they're not free. What I will say is I have been requesting the shade cards for the Knit by Numbers range, and they're in the process of making them. So as soon as, I've, as, soon as they're made, I will get them. And Knit by Numbers is also bringing out the same colour range in finger and weight. Um, the same um, merino blue uh, BFL, the same yarn, but in a finger and weight. But anyway, that's down the track, and I probably won't be getting that till later on in the year. Um, but yeah, shade cards are available. Um, I'm just going to do a quick shop update and let you know what I'm doing and where I'm going. Um, I did just want to say again, James Herbison's shop that's open in Greytown. I can't remember if, if I said what it's called. So it's actually called Joy of Yarn, but I'll leave the links below for James' shop. So if you are in the Wairapa region or just passing through as a tourist, make sure you go and say hello. Um, I want to do a quick shop update of a few of my things and just get some dates of a few of the places that I'm going to be Um before Canada and after Canada. So, and I'm just going to get a drink of water. Okay, um, as you are aware, if you've been following me, I am off to Canada. And I thought I'd give you those dates because it's the 14th of May is when I leave and I get back on the 8th of June. So I'm away a good three and a half weeks. Um, I am so, so excited and I am starting to really get excited. I actually went as far as getting my suitcase out um, they're stored under the stairs in our house. I got my suitcase out and a few things and I've laid them up on the spare bed upstairs and I'm actually just starting to, just starting to plan a bit and I, I'm super excited. I, I can't wait to go to Knit City and hang out with Noelle and Kelly um, and just, just be in that environment. It's, it's just going to be amazing. Um, I'm going with a friend and then 10 days later, my husband's flying in to join us and we're going to do a road trip um, 
um, through like Toronto, Montreal to Quebec, uh, Niagara Falls, all of those touristy places. <laughs> we do a road trip um, before flying home. Um, what I want to say about that is um, I just thought I'd put it out there now as a sort of a reminder. My online store will be open and my daughter will be managing it for me. But my daughter is also now nursing, so she works full-time shift work. So she's only begun, only going to come two or three days a week to the house to fulfill the orders and put them out to the courier. Now, if you order from me here in New Zealand, nine times out of 10, you get your parcel overnight um, at the most 48 hours. It's a really good service. While I'm away, it may take three to five days. So I just want to put that out there. Know that I'm overseas. Know that you can still order, but your order may just take a couple of more days to get to you. Um, Saturday, the 4th of May, I'm going to Gore, which is south of Dunedin. It's down there south. And I can't wait. I'm actually really quite excited about that. My husband's going to come with me. We're going to do a bit of a road trip, load the car up with some of my yarn, and I'm going to tra be a trader there for one of the days. Um, excited because I'll get to meet some people that I know follow me that I haven't met before. Um, but once again, just to be in that environment. And I love south of the South Island. I love it down there. So looking forward to that. And then I get home from Canada on the 8th of June. And then on the 19th of June is our big wool fest. Wool Feast here in Christchurch, which is our big annual um, Yarn Traders Festival. So I'll put those dates um, in my show notes, but I just thought I'd put them out there. Um, so that's me and my travels. I have um, I have been having a play around with some dyes and some dye pots, and I have been dyeing up some of my own yarn and naming it and selling it, and I've been having a real lot of fun. I haven't done as much as I would like to do um, just because I have been a bit time poor. and um, But it is something that I'm not going to put myself under pressure and I probably won't do a whole lot more until after Canada. But I do have, um, I thought I'd share them with you. So I have got yarn that I, I got a custom spun done for me and it's a woolen spun sock yarn so it's an 80 20 base it's merino it's milled here in new zealand but it is woolen spun and i thought i'd share that with you because a lot of sock yarns are actually um worsted spun and the difference is woolen spun um it blooms a bit more and it's a bit more lighter and airier when yarn is worsted spun, all the fibres are combed in the same direction and it's a more sleek type kind of, um, it's durable, it's probably a little bit less prone to pillying, nice stitch definition as opposed to woolen spun, which is a little bit loftier and area, um, but it is still very durable sock yarn. But it is beautiful for garments and shawls and children's wear it's machine washable um and it has been pre it's been put through a treatment that it's pre-shrunk so the reason i'm putting that out there is because yes it is a sock yarn yes it contains nylon but it's a really good all-rounder from anything from shawls or adult garments right down to socks or children's wear and these aren't on my website yet but I hope to put them on this afternoon. If you are watching this that as soon as it gets posted, um, as soon as it goes to where they may not be there, give me about 24 hours. But I wanted to share some with you. It is beautifully soft yarn. Um, this one I've called Beach Forest. And I don't I I have to work out how I'm gonna describe these yarns. Um, but there's blues and greens in there it's beautiful this one I called Sandy Bay and this one's got yellows and blues and it just reminds me of the beach Sandy Bay this one I love it's not really my colors but I loved it and I had a lot of fun doing it and I've called it Cherry Bomb and you can see why so there's some really deep pinks and maroons in there this is what I call variegated yarn 
if you are going to do a garment with it, always alternate your skeins. This one, um, I have done this before on another base and it sold really well and it's called Ca Castle Hill. There is a place we drive by often called Castle Hill and people do rock climbing and that there. And that's what inspired me um, when I saw this colour. Um, so again, just beautiful blues and browns. It's Castle Hill. And this one, I didn't know what to name it, but I really do love it. I've named it Sandy Speckles because it kind of just reminded me of, I don't know, speckles at a beach or something. I don't know. That's just the word that comes to mind. But it is kind of a neutral with um, greys. I can see there and pink and purple speckles. Actually, you can see it at the back there as well. It's, it's like a neutral with speckles. So that's um, five colours that I'm going to add to my shop. There's only a small batch of each one. Um, I think there's four or five skeins of each. So it's, there's not a lot. Um, but if you want to try some wool and spun sock yarn, or if you want to knit garments for the grandkids or young people, um, I think it's a really good durable yarn that I'm going to be really happy to be um, dyeing and producing. The next thing, these have been in my shop for a while. I do have a lot of stock and I wanted to promote them. Um, my blueberry vodka, I showed you before, I'm knitting up in this one called Rocky Road. This is 100% New Zealand Merino. Um, and this is a dark moody colour. It's called Rocky Road. This one I love because it reminds me of a dark denim or blue jeans, but it's actually called Agapanthus. <laughs> Nothing to do with denim or jeans, um, but it's a really nice, I mean, I call these blues neutrals because they just work so well with just jeans. But that one's called Agapanthus. And this one, once again, I would call it like a, a good neutral. It's called Black Beach, but it's greys greys and there's some neutrals in there so that one's black beach so they're the three colors that i do have a lot of stock of um and i think they make beautiful garments so that's that and there was one more thing i wanted to show you I have made these up and I thought I would do them as an exclusive offer um, at the Wool Feast that I'm going to in June. But I thought, actually, I've got quite a lot of them, so I should sell them because I think they're really quite neat. So as you know, I sell these stitch on hold cords. You've seen those. And I also sell the needle um, stoppers. Oh, I'll show them to you. These, they're quite a hard sort of rubber. They're needle end stoppers. And also um, these stitch markers I use a lot of because they're just really nice, smooth, good functional stitch markers. So what I've done is I've made a combo pack. And in here, I've put two meters of cable, which you can cut to whatever length you like, but there's two meters. I've put one whole set of needle tip stoppers. So there's six sizes and there's two of each. When you buy the packet, you get four of each. So this is um, a more condensed version. So one set of the stoppers, two meters of cable and 20 stitch markers, 10 of each size. Um, I can see them there. There's a smaller one and the yellow ones are a little bit bigger. But that nothing new to write home about but they're just good functional stitch markers so i have put them in this reusable container um which is really handy i use these with for a lot of my notions um and they're twenty dollars so they're not on my website yet but they will be and i think i'm just going to call them an accessories combo i'm wanting to knit with me accessories combo um so really, no, they make nice gifts as well. Um, and I think they're $20. They may be a little bit cheaper. I ha actually have to do the maths. I shouldn't have said that, should I? Um, they'll be on my website in the next day or two. <laughs> I might post them on my social media just to um, just to reconfirm what the price is going to be because they may be 
a bit cheaper. Okay. Um, once again, I want to say a big thank you for your patience because you really shouldn't have to wait a month for my podcast. Um, and I know it sounds like I'm making excuses, but this construction, um, I'm not enjoying it. <laughs> I'm not enjoying the noise or the vibration. Um, and there's probably another week or so left of it. And I just have to put up with it. I do. I probably will only be coming back to you with one more episode before I go to Canada. I will not do an episode from Canada, but I plan on taking lots of footage that when I come home, I'll incorporate into my podcast when I get home. Um, I'm, but I probably will post photos on my social media of while I'm in Canada. But I don't want to feel that pressure. I really want to enjoy being there in the moment. I don't want to feel like I have to have my selfie stick out taking videos. Um, I'm really going to be conscious of enjoying the trip. Uh, what else have I got to talk about? Okay, so that's about it. Episode 55, Saturday the 20th of April. Thank you for joining me. Um, do you know we're probably only about eight subscribers short of having 3,000. So please subscribe. And if you've got friends that watch that haven't subscribed, just give them a wee reminder that they should, that they should subscribe. It'd be really nice when I come back to you for episode 56, if I could say I've now got over 3,000 subscribers um, and I'm going to do a giveaway um, to celebrate that. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. I will probably do it via YouTube because I know when I've tried to do it in the past with Instagram or Facebook, it gets spammed um, and I don't like that. It's So I probably will do it via this platform, which is YouTube. Um, for the giveaway I always sit here at the end thinking I'm sure there was something else I had to talk about but there is one other thing with John Urban Textiles which is Yana Dalek, Apple Door and Knit by Numbers um, with any three skeins or more you get a free drawstring project bag um, so we gift with purchase and also um, I haven't talked about this today but my Mondim which is Finger in weight, 100 gram, 400 meters, $30. It's 100% Portuguese yarn, but durable enough for socks. Um, with any two skeins of this, any two balls, there is also a wee little drawstring project bag that I am doing as a gift with purchase. Um, and that's just while stocks last. So I think there's about 10. So if you do want some Mondim, buy a couple of balls and I'll include that little bag. Thank you very much. That's me done now. I'm pretty sure I've covered everything. Thank you very much for spending your time with me. I know that there are a lot of knitting podcasts out there. Um, and if you choose to spend this hour or hour and a half with me, I really, really appreciate it. Um, please comment. I read all the comments. I do try to get back to everyone um, in a reasonable time frame, although I know I'm a little bit behind at the moment in replying to some of the comments. Um, follow me on social media, Instagram and Facebook, and please subscribe and please give me the thumbs up if you enjoy the content. Um, so that's me from Unwind to Knit with me. I will see you for episode 56, one more time before I go to Canada. So it will be um, between 14 and 20 days. It'll be within the next two to three weeks before I leave. Thank you very much, everybody. Take care, um, stay happy, stay healthy, and I hope you get lots of knitting done. Bye for now.